Alright guys, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to gear up extremely fast for raiding in the Burning Crusade. So most people jumping into the Burning Crusade are probably going to jump into it with a retail mindset or even a classic mindset where you get to level 70 as fast as possible, you start doing dungeons, get some blue gear and then you start doing some raids and you couldn't be you couldn't be more wrong, to be honest. That is definitely not the natural way to progress your gearing on your character to get ready for raids. Obviously, that is the way to do it on retail, and from about the time of Raffle Lich King Cataclysm, you know, dungeon gear was a massive step up from questing gear. But in a Burning Crusade, that isn't the case. A lot of the questing gear is actually really strong, and you should actually be doing a few quests here and there to actually get really good and strong pieces. And that's the reason why a lot of people fall behind when it comes to gearing on a TPC server. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you the natural order to do things in order to get geared very, very quickly. From as early as level 67, even earlier, you're going to be picking up your pre-raid best in slot pieces. So let me go through a step-by-step -step list on what to do in order to get geared very, very quickly for raids. So the first thing you're going to do is when you get to about level 67, you're going to come here to a Burning Crusade database. You're going to go to Database, Quests, and then you're going to look at, obviously, Outland. You're going to look at Neverstorm and Shadowmoon Valley. So Neverstorm and Shadowmoon Valley are the highest level zones in the Burning Crusade, and they're going to provide the best gear. There are some exceptions to this when it comes to a few, like, spell power trinkets that I might talk about later. But, um, so you click Neverstorm, for instance, wait for it to load, then you come to this page which basically shows you all the quests and you click rewards here so that you can now what you can do is kind of collectively go through each and every quest obviously these are group quests that you should be considering as well and then obviously green quests like this and looking at the gear pieces which you know are best in slot for your class so for instance i'm playing a fire mage at the moment so what i need is spell power and spell crit or spell haste but normally you're only going to get spell crit on um, gear like this anyway. So when you're about level 67 you should be looking at all these quests and then say there's a quest here, we'll look at this quest and then we can see that it's a quest chain or it might not be a quest chain and you're going to start to look at what quest chains you need to actually work on and what quests you need to do. You need to forget about leveling to level 70 as fast as possible because that's irrelevant. What you need to do is actually start getting some gear and start getting some gold to get your flying mount so you can actually complete your Karazhan achievement. So that's another thing to bear in mind too. So yeah, make a little shopping list of all the gear that you want to get. Work on long quest lines that lead into group quests. You can do those group quests with your guild when you get them, or you can just save them for later for when, you know, more people are available. It's good to have, like, a few group quests ready to go. So when everyone else levels up to your level, then you can actually do the group quests. You should also be working on your Tempest Keep attunement early, because that actually leads into a really good quest reward too, and that's in the Shadow Moon Valley. So also bear that in mind as well. And then the second you hit level 70, you're going to go straight to Stormwind. You're going to take a flight path to Darkshire. And by the way, it is actually pronounced Darkshire. The word Shire is like an old Norse word for field. So it just basically means dark field. Then you're going to get on your mount and you're going to head for Deadwind Pass. Then you're going to come all the way to Karazhan. And you're going to accept a quest from this guy called Archmage Altaurus. It very simply gives you two very quick quests. Um, first one, you go down the little tunnel here, and you go to the end on the right to click the purple item on the water fountain, and you do the same when you go down to the pond down this one. You can look up those quests online, and you also have to kill about 10 ghosts to get their soul essences. The point is that you're going to start working now on your Karazhan achievement. The first quest that Karazhan achievement is going to give you after you do that, well, you have to go away for Dalaran first, and then get another quest, and then you go to Khadgar in Shatara, and then that quest will take you to the Shadow Labs. Before you go to the Shadow Labs, though, before you leave Shatara, there's a quest from a spy master who's in Shatara. In fact, I'm going to show you right now. So you get the quest from Khadgar here, obviously, but then this guy here, spy master, she will give you a quest to go to Shadow Labs as well, which will chain into another quest, which means you can get two dungeon quests for Shadow Labs while you're doing your achievement for Shadow Labs, so you have to kill the Guardian at the end. So you get two blue pieces of gear, and one of them, I'm pretty sure, is pre-read best in slot, uh, Shatterer Wraps, which I have on my mage at the moment, which is pretty re ridiculously strong. I also got these boots called the Shatterer Jumpers, which again are ridiculously strong because they've got 29 spell power with two socket spaces for you know, spell power gems, so they're really good. Then once you've done your Shadow Labs quest, you're going to take a flight map to Telrador in Zangamash. 
And then you're going to come here to the steam vaults and do a steam vaults run because you need to get the key guardian from here. And the first thing you're going to do, which I forgot to do the other night, is get this quest which is just outside for a really good quest item piece as well. Then you're kind of at a crossroad, you're kind of stuck because you need to do an Alcatraz run and to do an Alcatraz run you need about 900, well you need 900 gold precisely in order to actually fly up there in the first place. You can get a warlock to summon you, a nice guild member or a nice somebody person, a member in the community to, you know, ba basically allow you to cheese it without needing that gold requirement. But at the end of the day you probably are going to need flying at some point for doing Tempest Keep and you just, it's just generally obviously very useful. So at that point what you can do is go back to doing Neverstorm quest and Shadowmoon Valley quests if you haven't completed them all. You know, finishing up some group quests with the guild that I haven't done yet, you haven't done yet, which give you obviously a lot of money and obviously it'll give you some really good gear pieces. And then you can also start doing dungeons. So the dungeons I'd recommend doing are the dungeons, well the ones I'd prioritise over others are the dungeons that actually give you really good quest rewards. So first example would be, first one I recommend would be Sephir Calls as you can see here. By the way, this add-on I've got at the moment, it's called Atlas Quest, shows over quests for over dungeons, I definitely re recommend getting it, it's just a very simple attachment to Atlas Loot. So first of all you've got this quest which, the pre-quest, it always says there's no pre-quest uh, there, it's probably inaccurate. The pre-quest actually starts in the lowest city in Shattera, so definitely get that. Go to the lowest city, give that quest, and then it'll chain into basically just talking to the guy outside of the instance who also gives Terex Legacy. So obviously two really great items here. Um, Mark of the Raven Guard, great you know, pre-red best in slot tanking gear for like most people. I had this but then I replaced it um, with something better. So yeah, that's another two really good strong pieces. And then straight after you can do Mana Tombs. Mana Tombs has again like very easy quest that you can you just accept straight outside the dungeon and you can actually that's the wrong one. Mana Tombs is here. I think it, it basically leads into this quest and you get a really good belt from it which is really strong. Pretty simple, you don't need to do a long quest chain to get it into the, under, in the first place. And then you also got undercutting the competition too, which gives it, I think it's healing gear, but uh, yeah still pretty good. So yeah, that's two quests that you can very quickly accept outside the dungeon which give you really good rewards, pretty straightforward. Then you can do a Shattered Halls run, so you got the quest of Fell Embers which gives you a pretty good gear piece. And you've also got Turning the Tide which gives you a gear piece, and you've also got Pride of a Fell Horde. It doesn't give you a reward, but I think it gives you about 20 gold, so you may as well do it. Um, I think the quests, you get them, you basically get them at on a hold or frown map, pretty easy to pick up before you go into the dungeon, there's no pre-quest requirements either. But obviously you do your Alcatraz run, and then once you've done the Alcatraz run you need to do the Caverns of Time questline. So the Caverns of Time, basically, you can only do the dungeons in order. First of all you need to do All Hills, Brad Foothills, and when you progress through every single quest on the All Hills, Brad Foothills, which is very, very easy to do, you'll get a reward, again, another really good blue reward at the end of that, and look at those uh, hand pieces there for the mage, I'm definitely going to be picking that up soon because that's really strong. And then that progresses into the Black Morass, which is what you need to do for the Karazhan achievement. And then I'm pretty sure if we look at the... Yeah, you get a ring piece as well when you return to turning the quest there. So again, loads of fat gear. And then because progressing your reputation with the Keepers of Time is so fast, you actually get to probably revert by the end of doing the quest line. Um, although you might, have to do, you might actually need to do like another Black Morass run to be honest because I've been playing on increased rep servers. So let's look at the faction rewards for obviously the Keepers of Time and as you can see best in slot pr protection paladin loot and I think you can also use that you know warrior loot as well, mage loot, warlock loot, whoever can equip a sword that's probably going to be you know next to pre-raid best in slot apart from this weapon I've got here but obviously it's RNG whether you're going to get that or not. So you can get really, really good loot from the Keepers of Time and you probably only need to do like a few more runs to actually get it to revert to get those pieces. And by then, you're basically Karazhan ready. The point of this video was to kind of highlight how when you get to level 70 you shouldn't sit around just farming dungeons to get gear because what you can do is just do your Karazhan achievement, actually get ready to go into the raid in the first place and while you're doing your Karazhan achievement you're going to pick up really good gear pieces on the way. So there's no point farming loads of dungeon gear and then doing the Karazhan achievement and then realising oh I've got this quest reward from the Karazhan achievement quest line and it's like equal, if not better, than the gear piece that I picked up in the dungeon, which I farmed about five times to get. So, obviously that's kind of like where, where my point really stands. 
So I mean, at this point where you have your Karazhan achievement done, you're ready to go into Karazhan, you can actually step in foot into Karazhan and do some decent damage. You might not be able to clear the whole thing, but you'll at least be able to do some bosses and start getting some loot from Karazhan, depending on how hardcore your guild is. And then at this point, this is the point where you're actually, when you're actually in Karazhan, that is the point when you actually start farming dungeons, and then heroics, obviously. That's another thing that people think, of, and it's honestly what I thought before um, I started playing on my TVC, I thought, okay, I'll have to do loads of normal dungeons, then I'll have to do heroic dungeons, then I'll do Karazhan, but realistically, it's, you know, normal dungeons, then Karazhan, then heroic dungeons, then Gruul's Lair and Magfaridons, because... In all honesty, Karazhan is probably easier than the Heroic Dungeons, and a lot of the time the Heroic Dungeon gear is better than Karazhan gear. Well, the purple gear that you get at the end of a dungeon and the Badges of Justice gear that you can pick up along the way. So, the natural state of progression is very different in the Burning Crusade to other expansions, because what it does is it keeps you invested and interested in the game for longer, because, you know, when you're playing retail, all you do is grind dungeons, then grind raids, and then that's it. But in the Burning Crusade, there's, there's like loads more to do in order to, to progress your character. But anyway guys, I'm definitely going to end it there. My name is Medigoblin, to my next video, ciao.